Hey, welcome, Pastor Jeff. Another gift, G-I-F-T, of repentance. You know, it is a gift. It's not a punishment. It's a blessing. And God invented, the living God invented repentance in the same way that he invented forgiveness, for example. We know it's, it's a blessing to get to the point to be able to forgive someone, right? Well, it's the same with repentance. It is a gift, G-I-F-T. It's all throughout the Bible. In fact, the very first word that Jesus preached, repent, the kingdom is at hand. You can find that in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Now, what does repent mean? Well, let me give it a try. It's, it's not a one simple sentence. It's a process. First, you start with a sense in your conscience that God planted in your life that, hey, what I just did is wrong. Now, there's exceptions. If, if you sin and sin repeatedly, there's a point it says in Romans 1 that you will not get a chance to repent. It's done. It's done for you. I mean, you can just be so drowned in sin that you can't climb up out of the water, so to speak. But short of that, for the average person, repent starts with that feeling like, gosh, I did something wrong. And you know, deep in your heart, right from wrong. Now you build on that. Repentance means that you build on that to the point of saying, you know, I'm done with that. I really don't want to continue to operate out of my own sin. I know there's something better. And I heard about this guy, Jesus, and he's got something better for me. I would like to find out who he is. So you do a little homework and you say, you know, this is my time. Today is the day that I will choose Christ as my way. Jesus himself said, he is the way and the truth and the life. So you get to the point of saying, that's what I want to choose. And even before you choose it, you repent by saying, I am done with that pattern. I, am I want to die to my old self. Pretty strong statement, but that's what the Lord tells us to do. Die to yourself my own agenda, putting me first, I'm done with. So that takes some spiritual maturity and you exercise your free will. God gave you a free will and you say, I am done focusing on my own pattern, my own sins, my own way, having to be right, having to be number one in my world, no, I choose to repent. I'm going to change my thinking. It includes changing your thinking 180 degrees, really, to choose him. Choose him. Choose Christ. That's what we have to do. We have to choose the kingdom of the living God. It's not about joining a church. It's choosing the kingdom. That's what we're going to focus on the word kingdom today. You choose the kingdom. Jesus said, repent, the kingdom is at hand. Now, that was 2,000 years ago. It's still at hand. These are the end times. It's vital today that you're watching. And by the way, I'm going to finish my definition in a minute, but call me, 707-350-0659, or email me, Pastor Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, at repentday.com. <clears throat> I love to pray with you. Really, I love being a pastor. A lady by the name of Barbara from Vallejo, California called me after the show yesterday, or last week, I should say. First time she's ever watched the show, she loved it. Within three or four minutes, she called me. So give me a call. We can pray together. We're supposed to, we're supposed to share our burdens in these times. It says that in the book of Galatians, we're to share. We're to, you're having a tough day? Call me. Let's pray about it. Yeah, 
God is stronger. We call on him. He will bless us. He will answer our prayer. Any two or more are gathered in his name. He hears that prayer. So let's continue with the, the definition of repentance. You've changed your thinking. You've shown your spiritual maturity. You've said, I'm dying to myself. I want Christ as my new uh, anchor, if you will, in my life. He's the new one to whom I submit. He's the one who's Lord of my life. And here's what you do. You then begin to show that change in your thinking to other people. Repentance means a change in your behavior, a change in your character, an observable change to other friends around you, to your family, to your friends, and they say, wow, what happened? You used to be, hey, let's take an, a various sin, you know, angry all the time. Now there's more peace in you. What happened? And you can say, I chose Christ and I repented even before I chose him. I don't want to be angry. I want to, I want to follow Christ and be like he is. And you know what? He, yes, sometimes he was angry, righteously angry. He overthrew the, the money changers in the temple in Jerusalem. Okay, that, that's anger that's okay because it's righteous. It was the right thing to do. But short of that, no, you are to be in peace and you are to love people and you are to be filled with joy and patience and others of what we call fruits of the Holy Spirit. You demonstrate the Holy Spirit in you which is more powerful than any other spirit in the world. So I want to show you a scripture where this is presented besides, of course, Matthew 4, 17. Here we are in Matthew 6, verse 33. For seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. See how it works? First, get into the kingdom. Get into the kingdom. Then, as you are a member of the kingdom, you get filled with the Holy Spirit. You operate out of the Holy Spirit. And God uses you as a vessel. Yeah, you get to be used as a vessel. You get to find out your calling, your unique purpose, why God planted you, if you will, in your mother's womb with a call on your life, a life purpose, perfect for these end times. We need people like you that are watching to receive the gift of repentance, come into the kingdom, and then operate out of that beautiful gift from God. Only God can do that. God can put joy into your life in the middle of trials. He can put love into your life in the middle of trials. He can put peace into your life in the middle of trials. He can put patience in your life in the middle of trials. He can put goodness in your life in the middle of trials. He can put kindness in your life in the middle of trials. He can put faithfulness in your life in the middle of trials. And he can put self-control in your life in the middle of trials. All these are fruits of the Holy Spirit. This is the Christ in you that is operating as a vessel, his vessel, eternally, by the way. But here you are on earth right now, operating out of the kingdom. Do you see the difference? It's not about joining a church, although yes, go ahead and find a good church filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the word of God where you can operate freely in these gifts and grow in Christ. Yes, do that. I can pray with you and help you find that church. However, it's not only about church. It's about the kingdom. It's about growing in the kingdom. And you have to first be converted from your old way of life and then come into the kingdom. See, we have people sitting in churches today who've never been converted. They've never repented. They have not died to their self. They are still operating half here, half there, half worldly, half godly. It does not work. 
you're lukewarm. It doesn't work. The Lord says in Revelation 3, I'm going to spit you out if you're lukewarm. He doesn't want that. He wants you either cold or hot. And obviously, it's time to be hot, time to be on fire for Christ in a good way. You can be kind, you can be gentle, but you are, you are operating out of your purpose in life. You're operating out of your calling in life. You have a, a zeal to operate every day. You wake up in the morning and you say, Lord, what can I do to bless you? What can I do as your vessel today? Where do I need to repent? Do I have any more pride in me? Do I have any more spirit of lying? Do I have any more gossip in me? Do I have any more jealousy in me? Do I have any way in which I am dividing the body of Christ when I should be healing it? All those things, you can talk to him just like I'm talking to you. And he will coach you. He's your coach. He's your mentor. He wants you and me to be overcomers and to sit with him on his throne. Wow, what a promise, huh? As he overcame and sat down on his Abba Father's throne. So again, it's a simple message. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things should be added to you. This is what this one footnote says. Yeah, just reading right out of the Bible, it says, putting God's kingdom first is the first step on the pathway of God's miracles. And you can't walk on this pathway unless determining his will, purpose, his call on your life. It's true. To do so, first turn to his word, which is the atmosphere in which you may understand his will, recognize his way, hear the voice of his spirit. Second, watch for the little things, the little signs along the way, not in the great wind or earthquake or fire, but rather in a still small voice. And I would add to that, seek ways to repent. The more you repent, the cleaner you are as a vessel. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, if you, were, if you drank out of a glass every day for a month and never washed it, and it had soda pop and it had fruit juice and it had this and that and God knows what else in there, it would get dirty. It would get, it would get packed with something that's not clean. God wants you to wash every day. Wash with repentance. Doesn't that make sense? Now, when you confess a sin, first you've got to confess it, right? He will immediately, sometimes even before you finish your sentence, like, God, I am so sorry. I got angry again at my child. Before you even confess it, he will be forgiving you. He forgives sin. And it says in 1 John chapter 1, that he leads us, he, not only will he forgive sins, but he leads us in paths of righteousness, his righteousness. See, by ourselves, we don't have righteousness, but he has righteousness if you get into the kingdom. We have people sitting in church today who have never repented. They have never come into the kingdom. I'm talking even about pastors and priests. Oh, they know the language, they can talk, but they're hirelings. They don't have the heart to go after the sheep. You and I have been given the gift of repentance to get into the kingdom first. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You've got to confess your sins. And then on top of that, repentance means sh you shifted your thinking in maturity, you said, I am dying to my old self. That was a losing way to live life. I want to go to the way that is good and eternal and perfect and beautiful. That's given only by Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. Go into his kingdom. Gosh, I hope you get this simple message today. Is it too simple? I'm just telling you there's a difference between church and and religion, religion really turns people off, by the way. 
and the kingdom. You want the kingdom, my friend. Give me a call, 707-350-0659, or email me, Pastor Jeff, J-E-F-F, at repentday.com. And by the way, on that repentday.com, on that website, you can donate. We need your support to keep this program on the air, to pay for the editing. And we also need, of course, to support other pastors in other countries. You can also send us a check. Box 1302, Middletown, California, USA, (laughs) 95461. Hello, my name is George. I'm 26 and I'm from Ukraine. Hello there. Today we want to share with you about the kingdom, the kingdom of God. That's what comes into your life the moment you repent. The kingdom of God is a, is a kingdom where Jesus is Lord and King, and where He is King, fear becomes peace. Uh, bitterness becomes freedom and release, forgiveness, and sadness, depression becomes joy. That's what Jesus brings. And to uh, give you an example, I want to share with you today about one of our sons. Yes, George really became like a son in our family. Yeah, I grew up in the family with six sisters and one brother. And it, it's nice to have a big family, but we grew up not really nice because we were uh, poor. And my father, he, he, he was an alcoholic. George's father was called Victor. And Victor was a soldier during the Afghanistan war. The Soviet army was involved in Afghanistan. After the years in Afghanistan, Victor came home and he was a broken man. He started drinking to dull the pain, physical pain and the pain inside. He had bad dreams. He, his only escape was alcohol. All this time I grew up in the angriness, in the frustration, in the shouting, in the bad words, in a, in a really not nice place because uh, me and my sisters and my brother, we just had to survive because like uh, really we, we didn't even, sometimes we even didn't have the food to eat. We just were trying to get some bread in the cupboard and we were beaten up by, by, by the father. And his father sometimes on a winter's night used to put the whole family out on the street, in the snow, in the cold and they would be looking for a shelter, a place to hide until morning. I hated everything. I hated my dad. I I just I just didn't want to live. I just didn't want to live because all I see is how my dad is beating my mom, how he's beating us, how we don't have food, how everyone everyone every every one of my friends they have something that I didn't have and I even uh, in my life I remember that I even wasn't able to dream about what my friends have because I didn't know how to dream and really I, I was feeling like I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing because I even didn't have the clothes or uh, like just simple stuff like clothes or food. It was it was so hard that I just wanted to uh, commit a suicide or something like this. That's, that's what I grew up with. So alcohol became the place where Victor found comfort every single day of his life. He didn't care anymore that he had a wife and seven children that needed him. His wife needed a husband, his children needed a father. George needed a father. But his father wasn't there for him because he was an angry, bitter, drunk man. And alcohol caused him to abuse his family, beat his wife, beat his children. I was thinking of committing suicide not one time, 
because it was so hard to live here in this environment with my dad, with my family. So yeah, I, I didn't see something good. It was, everything that was going with me, it was feels like, oh, it's bad, on the bad, on the bad. Nothing good is nothing good is going on. Nothing good is will be happening in the future. So George was a little boy, and he became like a son in a house. We invited him to visit us when it was his birthday. We held a birthday party for him, and he grew up. He grew up in church. He he found a family that loved him, and he too had to make a decision to allow Jesus to become Lord and King in his life, to repent of his sin, the hate and the unforgiveness that he felt inside, or to continue to live with it. I remember that even the time when I was in the world, I remember that no one was accepting me. Like It was just a place where like people, people don't like you. They really don't like you, not because you are a not nice person. I wasn't a uh, not nice person. I was just lo not looking nice. I was dirty, I, was, I didn't have friends, I didn't have the clothes or something like this and because of this they were making decisions that just to judge me, to hate me, to push me away, to tell me bad words, how bad I am, how uh, bad my family is, just, they just didn't like me just because I was looking bad or something like this. I didn't act bad, I didn't swear or something like this, but really that was the time when people just hated me just because just because I'm not like them, just because I'm poor, just because I grew up in the different family or something like this. And when I went to church, when I uh, met God, and it was completely different environment because when people in the world, they hate you, then most of the people in church, they accepting you and it doesn't matter what you wear, doesn't matter how you talk, doesn't matter how you even smile sometimes, but they accept me as I was. I, like. Uh, uh, really, life in the world was just terrible because everyone was just hating and life in the church with the Christ they just accepting me and loving me even even if I wasn't that that nice they also they are also praying for you they are caring for you they always ask you how are you doing or it's 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 not how in the world no one in the world was asking me oh George how are you doing are you feeling all right no no it wasn't like this in the church everyone is asking George are you all right how are you today or something like this it's something nice it's much different it's it's comforting you it, it feels you it it, it makes you feel better it makes you feel much more better because you are accepted you were accepted in the church with the christ i know that even that time when i had a bad experience but have a bad uh, situation with my family with my dad even at that time God was holding his hand on all my family because now we grow up, yes, now I grow up and I know that I grew up in the church and what God did in my heart that he took away all my angriness. I forgive, I, I forgive my, my dad. I, I, don't, I don't believe anymore that anyone is higher than me and I'm not putting myself higher than anyone else. I'm just feeling on the same level like everyone because we are all humans and what happened in the past it not it, it's not fault of the other other people yeah i know that enemy was trying to steal something good from me and he was stealing something something good because i really don't remember something good in my uh, childhood but i know that there was something good and i know that god he restores he he put me up he gave me really he, he blessed me. So I was told not by one person that God is have a, God have a good future for me if I will be with Him. I was about age 14 when I repented and made this decision to follow Jesus, to give all my life to Him, and just just to change myself. Yeah, and it didn't mean that everything straightly immediately went away. It means that I want I wanted to change I wanted to change my life and. I, I, I was deciding just to take the step and to go further and further and further little by little, little by little and that's where, where I'm right now just because at the age of 14 I made this decision just to walk with God and not to step out. And when he made that decision, when he repented he was able to forgive Victor he was able to pray for his father and the day Victor died, 
to have the assurance that he also repented, that he also allowed Jesus to become Lord and King in his life. Yeah, and to forgive my father was really a difficult thing, but I remember when I made, it, made this decision to forgive him, it was like a second, like I just decided and everything went away. And really, without God, I wasn't able to do this. Even even with what I grew up, what I saw from my dad, I was still I was praying always for him, just because I wanted to, him to be safe. I wanted to see him better. I want I want I wanted to see him like a dad in my life. So today, George is a young man with a future. He has a fiance, a lovely young girl. He has a job. He's working on the internet, and he knows God has a plan for his life. Because he's not living in the kingdom of this world anymore. He's living in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the peace and the joy of Jesus Christ is inside of him. Because I don't want to have life that I had before. I know Because I know if I didn't meet the Christ, then I know I would be in the world. Maybe I will be in the prison. Maybe I will be like a thief or a killer. Who knows? Because all with what I grew up, it was... Yeah, it was it, it 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 made me like this. I was angry. I was frustrating. I was punching walls, and and yeah, nothing good is was happening in my life. But because of Christ, I I grow up now, and I understand that He was always with me. He was absolutely always. And when my dad was my dad was beating my mom, when my dad was kicking us from the house, when we didn't have the food, God was still there. God was still there because now I grew up. I was in the uh, I become and uh, I was trusted to uh, be one of or be one of the leader in the church. I was trusted to lead some and other projects in the church and everything else and everything that God blessed me. I have a lot of friends. I just can't I just can't count and I really excited about this and everything that's going now in my life. I see that God. God is every day with me, every minute, every second. That's beautiful, that's lovely. And that is what Jesus has promised every one of us when he, when he came and He said, Repent, for the kingdom of God is close to you. It can be inside of you. Why don't you make that decision today? It's there for you. It's there for the taking. The kingdom is here. God bless you. Tell me about your testimony. Did you find the kingdom? Did you find the kingdom? That's the point of today's message. Gosh, I hope you did. Seek first the kingdom. First. Is he first in your life? Is the kingdom first? Oh, hey, wait a minute. Is your family first? Is your job first? Is your wealth, whatever? No, no, no. You want the kingdom, my friend. You want the kingdom first. Yes, you want the kingdom. Hey, until next time, this is Pastor Jeff. Thanks for joining. Get a hold of me. We can pray together. God bless you. God bless you. Yep, it's the gift of repentance.